first U.S. shows in over a year. I can't believe it. What's going through your head? I am so thrilled and so grateful. I mean, this whole year has been wild. You know, not being able to work in my own country, it's not the way it's supposed to be here in America. And you can hate that picture all you want, but it's very much covered under the First Amendment. I didn't break the law, okay? If you don't like a Halloween mask and ketchup, get over it. Was there a moment where you thought, I'm not gonna work in America again? Yeah, there were a couple of days. I always say I was broken for two days. Like, you know, I famously said, I'm gonna be honest, he broke me. He broke me. He broke me for two days. Then I got up and started writing and working and plotting, and then I realized nobody had my back. So I was completely on my own. It's been a real rude awakening, and then I just leapt into action, like back to my roots. Nobody can stop me from a microphone and my offensive jokes. I went, okay, what made me, like what led to my biggest success? And I thought it was when I used to do the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles and I called the owner and I said, what is your worst time slot? I'll take it. And I started, you know, just coming up with material. I would do shows there and then people would line up around the block. And then I started going, okay, I can do like theatrical stand-up shows. Did you ever think, when the career kind of seemed like it was falling apart, did you think personal life's gonna fall apart too? My personal life did fall apart. I mean, I lost 90% of my friends. And my joke is, my I, I'm down to eight gay guys, two puppies, my boyfriend and my mom, and my mom's on the bubble. So yeah, my life got very pared down. And you know, it was interesting, the comedian Cat Williams called me that day, and he said, get out a pen and a piece of paper. Write down the name of every single person who calls you today with complete support, and at the end of that, day, look at the list, and those are who your friends are. <laughs> there were three names. Who were the three? Kat, Jim Carrey, and by the way, let me just stop and say, Jim Carrey said something really vital. He goes, today, you're the most famous comedian in the world. And I was sobbing, and I go, Jim, for all the wrong reasons. He goes, no, use it. He goes, you're gonna have material that's so unique and personal. So it's Kat, Jim, and who was the third that called you that day? It was my mom, although it took me an hour to convince her I wasn't a member of ISIS. I mean, that's my life. You gotta laugh. You, you gotta, gotta laugh. laugh at being, it, like, I'm 57, telling my 97 year old mom that I have not joined ISIS. And she kept calling it a club. She kept going, Why did you join that club out of all the oh, clubs? <laughs> so I'm like, Mom, put the box of wine down and we'll talk tomorrow. So I finally, I finally won my mom back. Had your pal Joan Rivers been around? Oh. You know she would have picked up the phone that day. Yeah. What would she I have mean, said to you? Honestly, I, I, I miss Joan Rivers every day. She was, besides a pal, a true mentor. And, you know, one thing that I learned from her was when the going gets tough, go tougher. If you could go back and do it again, would you? Yes. Yes. And for a long time, I was saying things like, no, I wouldn't do it. Or I've even said, you know, I would do it with like a blow up doll so people would really get it. And now I realize he really deserves it. Like when Eddie Munster went on Good Morning America and said she deserves what's coming to her, I'm like, no bitch, you deserve what's coming to you. And guess what's coming to you? Me.